Hi, it's Tim. Welcome to the corner. Today we have this. This is eight and a half kilograms of box. It's not a very big box and it's got a carrying handle, which is fortunate because this is eight and a half kilograms. Should we open it up and have a look? Okay, I didn't suspect that the box would be original and indeed it is a 22 inch OLED TV. So this is ultimately just one layer of bubble wrap. Please people, be better at packing stuff. That is not adequate protection. But we shall see if it has survived. And here it is, it barely fits on the desk. This is an Amstrad Alt 286 laptop computer. It's not the first laptop they made, this is the Mark II, if you like. Okay, there is a blemish on the screen. I think that is actually behind it. So, there you go. It is the second generation um, 286 laptop. They also made a 386SX version of this, which didn't have an awful lot more power, but it was at least a 386SX. And why was I interested in this? Well, it's a PC. It runs DOS, or it should run DOS. It's got a three and a half inch floppy, and uh, that's not a Centronic port, that's actually for an external floppy. Then on the back, we've got standard printer, serial, serial dip switches, VGA, more dip switches, and an expansion port. This is an entire 286 computer in a sort of luggable format. It, ah, it has a handle. So, oh, uh, you can carry it, but you would be a weightlifter afterwards, if not before cover for something or other. I'm going to guess it's a battery. Oh, how about that? Is it going to come out anymore? No. Uh, line up the arrows. That's, that's a hint. Yep, yeah, that is a battery. That is NICAD. It is also blooming heavy. Do not dispose of old batteries in the fire. Without knowing anything else about it, shall we see if it works? Or shall we see if it emits blue smoke? Either would be interesting. And, three, two, one. It does nothing. I suppose that wasn't really a surprise. So, I think we are going to take this apart and see what's inside it and then see if we can get it to go. Let's see if we can figure out how to take this apart. So I'm going to guess that the battery needs to come out. That's a kilogram there. This thing is spec to weigh seven kilograms. This is going to be the memory cover. 
So that's interesting. Three different screws. Oh, we have a full set of memory. That's good. This should take up to four megabytes. There's a socket for something. Phoenix BIOS, I would guess. So this is um, metalized paint. I'm guessing this is basically a machine in two halves. And the main circuit board will be on the bottom and the display etc will be on the top. This might need to come off. This is the Maybe there would be a screw underneath the, there, but there isn't. There's an earth strap here, which we need to undo. And that's the innards. So, it's quite complicated. This is obviously a switch mode power supply. Speaker, hard drive. It's a Pioneer. No, sorry, Connor. CP3024. Now that power supply looks pretty manky. I think it is going to need recapping. I'm not sure whether this stuff is just, I'm not sure what that is. It is kind of, looks kind of oily. It's coming up, coming off on the screwdriver anyway. Maybe that is cap goo. Maybe something has been leaked inside it. But certainly towards the back, that looks kind of gungy. And the board looks like it might be sticky. So I'm going to guess that the caps have leaked on that. And maybe that's why it's not coming on. So we need to further dismantle it. There is going to be a PRAM battery on here as well somewhere. And we need to remove that. It's going to be down there. I can just see it. So I think we need to take this off first. I'm following a set of instructions off the internet. Which may or may not be good. Plenty of hidden screws. So that is the coprocessor and memory. Five screws for the floppy drive. This one has an earth lead. Another baggie for these screws. Right, now we need to get this metal plate out. That's pretty rusty. In fact, that's very rusty. Maybe that is because these are different metals. Maybe that's, that's some sort of bimetallic reaction. I think this whole unit has to come off. Oops. That screw is not coming out. I think some WD-40 on that. Okay, I got the cover off. It was um, quite a lot of effort. I had to take the power supply out and get um, WD-40 on that screw at least and then a bunch of these others had to come out in order to get the plate off and just look at this that has leaked something rotten so this battery will have to come out in any case There you 
here and that some of those traces look like they are completely eaten away and there's corrosion going all the way up here you can see it on this connector you can see some of it there and that probably explains what this rust was I don't know what this rust is here in this greasy gunge it's not natural in any case but what is worrying is what is under that chip because if these traces are gone here and some of these may have gone round here then goodness knows what's underneath that chip I seriously think this machine is stuffed because I'm not going to be able to take that chip off and I don't know that I've got the skills to solder that kind of small set of wires I don't even know how many layers are on this board I and mean, there may be internal layers that are also rusting so I kind of think that this is going to be a spares board well that's a shame I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video PCBWay produce printed circuit boards starting at $5 for a regular two layer PCB any colour you like they also do 3D printing, CNC machining, all that good stuff and they are now doing UV printing on PCBs what this means is that you can print in full colour any design that you like just like a silk screen on top of the solder mask check them out www.pcbway.com so gem or junk okay we're not quite ready to um, give up on this yet let us see if we can't get this board out i think we're going to have to take basically the entire rest of it apart certainly we're going to need to get this cage off and that means probably taking the hard drive out. Let's unplug it anyway. So these caps will all have to come off. There's definitely some bloom underneath. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I don't even know what that is and there's white stuff down that side it looks like battery like battery powder okay I'm going to clean this up and then come back I don't know what that stuff was on there but you can see it's really nasty brown muck Ugh. I've wiped it down as much as I can there's quite a lot of loose rust on here you can see it's all coming off so that will need to be treated and I'm just going to rub down some IPA on this stuff. I don't know what's gone on here. I don't know if it's been dunked in something. Something has been spilled in it. This is really to basically stop me getting mucky and dirty and gungy. And I think that's just plain rust. Hopefully that's just plain rust. Right, but the bad boy is this acid damage or alkaline damage around here and for that we are going to use the good old vinegar. And you can see it fizzing and bubbling in places, so it's definitely reacting. Okay, I'm going to leave that for a while. So that's had a while. I'm going to do, I've doused the entire board basically. Just let that drain off a bit. Then I'm going to sluice it down with some IPA. So that's dried off basically now and what I'm still worried about is that it's got underneath the solder mask and it's eating away at the traces. 
and you can still see green patches where we couldn't actually get at it because that's underneath the solder mask. So I'm going to have a go with my uh, fiberglass pen. This, by the way, is the CPU. This is the uh, AMD NATL286-16. 16 megahertz 286. But I'm just going to go over some of these here and see what we can see. But what to do is basically get down to the metal and see if these traces are actually intact. We can always paint back over it. Hard to tell, still need to go further. I think they may still be intact. We're still going to need to clean up all these traces and go over them with the pen because the corrosion is getting under the um, solder mask and that is going to eventually corrode even if it's not corroding now. And then we just paint over the, um, paint over the top with new solder mask. So this is going to take a while. Okay, I've rubbed a bit off and that's enough to see that there is definitely a lot of breaks in these traces. Now I want to take this connector off, the floppy drive connector, and possibly this VLSI as well. We can see in here there is a lot of corrosion inside this floppy connector and we can see that these there's corrosion all the way along here. So this board is basically, I think, no go. Yeah, there's corrosion there. A lot of these traces will have breaks in it. These little spots, some of them are just blobs in sort of corrosion underneath. Some of them are eaten through tracks. So these are minute. There's no way I could possibly attempt to fix those with a bodge wire without at least a microscope. I don't have one of those. Anyhow, let's take this off. You can see it as, um, it, it, it. yeah, I'm trying to put some fresh solder onto this connector and it really doesn't want to know. That's because it is basically corroded. And we're going to have the same problem trying to unsolder the IC. I'm going to use heat on that. And I'm just trying to flood this in the hope that some of it sort of sticks. I don't care too much about the connector because it's a standard connector and we can always get another one. Right, let's just see if any of it will come out with the solder sucker. So I managed to get the connector off eventually and I've um, beeped out the traces underneath. There are a few that are um, not connecting but that was actually a fair bit rusty and similarly on the back. So a few of the holes that I didn't manage to clean out yet. Those connectors are also very rusty. Lots of corrosion. So I'm going to try and get this VLSI off I'm not sure I hold out a lot of hope for that, but we will give it a go. I'm going to put some captain tape on here to try and um, protect the 286, if nothing else. Okay, I've got the VLSI chip off, and you can see there is definitely some corrosion underneath the chip. Now, I don't know whether there is still continuity everywhere, but I can say for reasonably certain that if we don't treat it, it will rot through because those are showing signs of corrosion. And who knows, that corrosion could exist under the CPU, it could exist under any of these other chips. And definitely we can see places like this here, that's a big one. That's a discontinuity there. That is actually fine. That is a discontinuity there. That is a discontinuity there. There are lots of discontinuities along here and 
around here and, and there and, and so on. And that's a discontinuity. You can't even you can't even see the via on the top here. So I don't know how we would connect that. We would probably have to figure out where it goes to and see if there's somewhere that we can route a, a wire to. And that's going to be true of a lot of these. Um, just because we've got continuity at the connector here doesn't mean that we've got continuity all the way through to the data line. This is the data bus and you can see there are signs of corrosion all the way along that data bus. So, so what have we learned? Well, one thing is people, if you've got one of these computers sitting in your attic, sitting in your back room, sitting in your shed, in your garage, wherever, and you have not taken the battery out, take the bloody battery out, because this is what happens. Please, please take the battery out. Going back to our original question at the beginning of this video, gem or junk? Well, I don't think there can be any argument really. I mean, it is junk. Maybe one day if I ever get a microscope, then I will be able to do something with these traces. I don't know. But if the traces get fixed, there is still the matter of the power supply. Um, this board needs recapping. I don't think the caps have done anything like as bad a damage as the battery did. And down the other end of the board, that is damage, I think, from the caps on the power supply, which sit above it. And they've all leaked down onto this board, onto these connectors and this connector. Well, this connector might still actually be this battery but I suspect it was sort of kept on its side like that because all the damage seems to be down the bottom of the board. Anyhow, thank you for watching if you've got this far. Please check out my Patreon. They are a great bunch of guys. They are scrolling up the screen and I will see you next time. See ya. Bye.